I was watching Taylor and Will talk about some bus with the boys, and they were talking about you know if you go to an Alabama or something like that, mm-hmm. like, could, like you see a lot of guys that go there, and go to the league, and they're only in the league for three, four years. That's a fact. Except for Derrick Henry, because that dude's just different. Yeah, than right, Julio yeah. Jones. But he can like, play as long as he wants to. Half the league is, is drafted guys, and half the league is undrafted guys. And a lot of those undrafted guys are guys coming from like a Rice, yeah. Tulane, Toledo, mm-hmm. Toledo. Yeah, and they're in the league for <laughs> fifteen years. I mean, they, they obviously, they don't get beat up as bad as mm-hmm. people that play for Bama or Florida or Georgia. Yeah. Us, we get beat up on a lot. SEC, man. Oh, my gosh. SEC is physical yeah. every single week. Thanks. You gotta love it, though. That's what we're built on. Like Coach Arnett said today. Oh, yeah. Pack your lunchbox in your hard hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to be tough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get your haircut at. I mean, it's the team barber. We went to uh, his we shop. To his shop instead. Yeah, yeah. You're a team barber. He be really? down in the game room. Yeah, he come in on Thursdays usually. Really? Facts. Honestly, the best part about like New Year's Six bowls and stuff like that is in the lounge. Like they have a barber in the officials, and like it's it's a crew. Like it's eight to ten people from the same barbershop that come in, bro. Yeah, we ain't seen that one yet. Right. We don't have it this year. For sure. We don't have it this year. For sure. For sure. I went to uh, my first haircut I got here was last week, and I went, I went to some place that Will recommended. And I <laughs> sat there for an hour, basically. And then they were like, Oh, are, are you, do you have an appointment? I was like, No. She's like, walk Okay. <laughs> well, just, I'll just come cut you real quick. She cut me. It was fresh. It was good. But I was there for an hour. It was not a, not a pleasant experience. Yeah. Let's start before you. I don't like to wait. That's the thing about dude. We literally walked the in toughest. and got out today at his barbershop. That's the hardest part about moving somewhere new, bro, is like finding that yeah. stuff. Yeah, fact. The stuff, stuff you, that need, you need, yeah. bro. Oh, because like, dude, <laughs> Nashville, like, I had the same same spot for four years. Yeah. At home, same spot for, I mean, my mom buzzed my hair until I was like 16, but like <laughs> after that, same spot for four years. The bad thing about Starville is like barbers, they just come and go. It's so bad. Really? They just come and go. Like we had, I was a, my freshman year and sophomore year, we had a guy named Nick. He cut in his apartment. And like, if you called him at like one o'clock in the morning, I was like, I need to cut. Come really? on. It was great. Bro, we moved. had dudes last year pregame, like not pregame, but like the night before the game. We were in hotels, like in the bathtub, like cutting each other's hair. So they needed it that bad. He was like, I right, gotta do something. Yeah. Do something. Right. So that's why he come in Thursday before we get ready like to hit that. the road type. Yeah. I like that. It'll be it'll be like a little line in there. But a lot of oh. them won't. Half and half, like half will go in there, but half won't. Even get More cut way. by him, yeah. The, so the story about Georgia is so we had a um, we had a, a barber shop in the facility, but you had to pay the dude when he came. It was like thirty bucks. To same pay thing. Yeah, that's exactly. Oh, same. you gotta pay it. Thirty dollars. The, yeah. the school don't pay it. No, mm-hmm. they should. I wish they did. That dude. We come out. Yeah. That should be an IL, an IL thing. Just post a picture of you, of you cut with the boy and be like, all right, you're good forever now. <laughs> that's it. All right, D Nick. Welcome to uh, welcome to Real Talk with the boys, Wally. A pleasure as always, sir. Oh yeah, uh, D Nick. I did not know that you were from Mississippi. Facts. Every single soul on this team is from Mississippi. Yeah. How far? So how far is is it? Pedal. <laughs> Pedal, yeah. Pedal, Mississippi, the big city. Okay, so it's south of here, right? Yeah, about okay. Right on the three hours, about two fifty. That's not bad. Yeah, it ain't that bad. How far is that from you, Wally? But how? Mm-hmm. We so grew all, up together. All, like all y'all are like same area. A lot of y'all are same area. Well, we grew up together though. Basically. Really? Yeah, yeah. Facts. Yeah. I'll let you lead this one then. Shoot. Uh, I'll bet you got some good stories. Yeah. So uh, our uh, moms uh, worked together. Really? And we played baseball against each other a lot. We Who used to better? beat up on them boys. Baseball and football, Little League. Baseball and football, Little League, we beat up on them boys. <laughs> That's not 100% true. That's a fact. That's Who, not who's true. better between? Listen. And what, baseball? Yeah. Me. What? Cause we're pitching, we see them in the playoffs, high school. Oh my God! Uh, let's start. Let's start little league. Start so little league. My younger brother, who's <sighs> the one that's at mm-hmm. Minnesota right now, the pit, the uh, at bat before the pitcher threw and hit his pinky finger, and knocked the nail off of it. We got like nine. We like nine. Shut up. We got <laughs> we got up the next at bat, and he walked up there like this with the bat in his hand. D Nick came in to pitch. <laughs> Second pitch. See you. Really. My mom was just sitting there like, <laughs> I don't know him. Good job, Snoop. 
It's all right, D. It's all right. <laughs> that's hilarious. Mm-mm. Bro, that's yeah. so... I got two baseball stories. One's funny, one's kind of crazy. First one, we were like 14 years old, bro. And like, I was a decent baseball. I played at Georgia for two years, but went to bunt. Mm. We're right back to my face, mm-hmm. dog. Oh, God. Talk about a, oof. It bust you open? Oh, bro, I was the worst. My whole nose is like my, like this, the part that's not your bone, like the cartilage is like all screwed up. So I can like shove my nose. I'm not gonna do it, but I can shove my nose to like a 90 degree angle. So I was throwing or toss, soft tossing before a game in high school. And uh, we had like, a, it was like a regular net. I don't even know I was behind it. And I tossed it, hit it right back, hit me right here. It was Dude, speaking COVID. of right here. Yep. So my mom used to hit the ground balls in the backyard growing up. And I was always like, when I was younger, like a little afraid of the ball. Like I would, on the ground ball, I'd kind of like try and like not <laughs> get, get sideways with it. Well, bro, she squared one up in the backyard. Line drive straight to my face. Mm. Wouldn't scare the ball after that. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. No here's a, here's another intense baseball story. Uh, this one gets kind of crazy. But we were playing my junior year of high school. And uh, I was playing first. And a dude had a pop-up. And I went to run at the fence. And, like, I ran, I ran to the fence and tried to reach over the fence. And, like, didn't stop in time. And completely – I was running – if this is, like, the right field line, I was kind of running, like – kind of with the fence a little bit, but not like right at it. And I clip my lip. You know how metal fences have that metal bar and then the triangles on yeah. top? I clip my lip and my nose on the on the triangles on top because I was so tall. I fall down. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm like like looking up. And the tra- like my, my mom's out there, the trainer's out there, and the trainer's like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. I look up, my mom's like, you're not all right. Like, we gotta go. <laughs> my lip was split down the middle. Nose was broken again. And we go to the hospital. And get, this is a wild story. This is a total God thing, though. So we get to the hospital. They do an x-ray of my face just to make sure it's all right. And I'm sitting there with, like, things in my lip, stitches, like, just, I made a balloon face, dog, like, crazy. Still in my uniform, blood just all over me. I remember, like, two doctors came back in. It was one or two. And she was like, yeah, yeah you'll be all right. But we got, like, a, a bigger problem. Like, we think we found something in your jaw. And so, of course, like my mom's, my mom's a nurse, so she goes into nurse mode, asking all these questions. I'm like in and out of it because like I'm just, just out of concussed, like out of it. We go through, like, what does this mean? What do we got to do? She's like, we don't know if it's like a huge tumor or not. So like we're freaking out. So we go home, and that night, like I'm like freaking out, like I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna die. Like, I got a tumor in my face, and they're like, we got to do like an immediate surgery on your wisdom teeth to go through the jaw to figure out what it is. So they took my wisdom teeth out, which I didn't really need it, need it to happen, but they did anyways. And they went through, and ended up just being a big gap in my jaw. Like my jaw was just hollow from like here to here, and so it ended up not being a tumor, or it could have been just God just said, "Hey," because they were like, "This is not really. We haven't seen this yeah. before," but it ended up being nothing. And luckily, I didn't get hit there because if it was empty, she was like, "I don't know how you played football football for eight years because if you would have gotten hit there, your entire face would have just been." Dismorphed. Yeah. You know? So, bro, that was absolutely insane. Is it still hollow? No, we're good now. They went there, like, did some still stuff did. to it to make it fill out. Yeah. But everybody always talks about, like, wisdom teeth surgery, like, being like, oh, like, whatever. Bro, I was down bad for, like, two weeks. Like, no. fevers, like, because I, I didn't eat for, like, two weeks because I couldn't. Because it wasn't just the wisdom teeth. It was, like, the whole jaw. The whole jaw. Bro, miserable. Absolutely miserable. But that was a bad thing. Let's go to a good thing. We're going to go to our real talk, our fist pump feature of the week. So, the way we describe this is, I gotta bring a putter, because at, at Georgia we use a putter. But the thing about Tiger Woods, he sinks a putt, gets mm-hmm. a fist pump. This is a segment we do where it's like something that was fist pump worthy of the week. So something that fired you up this week or last week, just recently. So Wally, I'll, I'll let you kick it off, show him, show him how it's done. I went and got some barbecue, well it's, it's a barbecue spot. I really been wanting to try. And I woke up from my nap today and I was just like, I, I want it. And I went, to, it's like in a gas station. And I walked in there, I grabbed me a uh, leg quarter meal, some baked beans, mac and cheese. Where was it? All right. Gosh, I don't even, it's at, a, it's at the egg sign that's on the corner. If you come in the back way from campus. So if you come in from the little Walmart and you're going to like. Say so you're if going you're going from Walmart back to campus, it's the chef on your left. Is on your left? Not that, see, not that Walmart, the other Walmart. The neighborhood Walmart? The neighborhood Walmart. So if you're coming from there, you exit off at go the left. first exit and go straight down. No, exit off right. 
The right gas station. Yeah, yeah. The red one on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's on the left hand side. It's the red one. Yeah. It's on, yeah, it's on the left So you come out of Walmart, you go left, and then you get off that exit and come back yeah, around going that right, right there off the Going highway. towards, like, say you're going towards Wheels House yes. from the little Walmart. Yes. Yeah, it's right there to the left. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, it's perfect. See, Alexa might be going out of town this weekend. I might be hitting that up. <laughs> that sounds good. It feels good. pretty good. Heck yeah. I might have to try that. For me, I'd say mine was probably this haircut I got. <laughs> Uh, for media fresh. day we got tomorrow coming up so had to get spiffed up you know what time are your pictures at four mm. I did get pretty rowdy <laughs> about this cut though I can't lie <laughs> it looks you know? clean brother it looks clean I appreciate it man well, when you're, what time is yours uh, three see I'm at ten that's right lucky at, right after tomorrow oh. morning yeah no, it's well you'll be looking care. big though Shoot. yeah well, maybe look swollen up a little bit. Yeah, I'll get a little pre pump in. <laughs> Some push ups in before you do that, then. Yeah. My fist pump feature of the week is <laughs> oh, dude. So I'm a big, like, TV show, movie person. So I, the new Jack Ryan series, I don't know if y'all know what Jack Ryan is, but it's like an action series on Amazon Prime. Just came out. I just finished it. The new uh, season of The Witcher came out on Netflix. I'm watching that right now. It's absolutely gas. The quarterback show on Netflix yeah. just crushed that. Absolute fire. That's nice. All of them last like four days. And then um, Oppenheimer comes out this weekend, and I cannot wait. You know what that is? No. Mm -mm. All right, so basically it's a it's a Christopher Nolan piece, and he is known as like one of the best writers, I guess, in, in Hollywood. Like he did Interstellar. He did um, Inception. He did... What else did he do, Carson? The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Like, he's a big-time writer. And so he got Matt Damon, the guy from Peaky Blinders. Killian or Cillian Murphy? Yeah. But this huge cat. It's a three-hour movie, but it's about, like, the creation of the nuclear bomb and, how, and like, how it all happened and, like, a recreation of that time <laughs> period. So uh, I'm a big war guy, so. I, I like the movies, too, war movies. Yeah. I like that. And then you got Barbie coming out, which Barbie. I, bet, I bet Will would like, love what, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like Barbie Dog? Yeah, it's like a real life Barbie movie. No yeah. shot. It's got what's his face? Uh, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Margot Robbie. Oh, and Margot Robbie's in it too. Is Margot Robbie? I might watch it. I love me some Margot Robbie every once in a while. We we'll get some barbecue, and then I'm gonna go watch two movies on Saturday. <laughs> My girlfriend's making me go see Barbie. So. Hey. Let me know how hey, Margot Robbie. It's a good excuse to go, brother. You got yep. a good Saturday. Come on. Have y'all seen <clears throat> Wolf of Wall Street? Mm. I think I've skimmed through it. Mm. Like, Mm -hmm. You've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's a funny story. So it is fun. Uh, we were when I was at Georgia. We were recruiting Gunnar Stockton, who's a quarterback there now, and I knew him through some family friends. So on his visit, I hosted him, and just a real quiet, awesome, like innocent kid. So we didn't go out or nothing. We just went to my baseball roommate's room, and we were like, "Hey, we'll watch Wolf of Wall Street." And he's like, "Yeah, sure. Like that's cool." Like I, like 16 years old has no idea what's going on, and then we play that movie. And I look over at him during some of the scenes that go on in that movie, and he was just like, two days later, he committed to South Carolina. <laughs> Ended up committing back to Georgia once Coach Bubba left. But it was, I was like, eh, that might have been might have been my fault. All right, so, Dina, back to you. Uh, from Mississippi, you went to uh, Pedal High School, but you took a little different route to get here. You went to community college first. Talk about what that was like going from – and you played quarterback. Yeah. So, talk about talk, – give us the whole lowdown on that. Well, got recruited, quarterback, signed, quarterback, played my first year. It was like 50-50 between me and the other guy who was starting at Jackson State. Well, he's battling for the starting job at Jackson State now. He was like 50-50 for like the first four weeks of the season. Then it was kind of like he was getting more playing time. I wasn't. So I was like, okay, let me stick with it. So then um, season goes on. We get to the final two games. Number one team in the country, Jones, which is our rival. Then we got Northwest which we had to beat Jones to. We beat Jones 34-0. I still mm. get, I get no clock except for being a placeholder. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm heated. I'm like, there's no way this happened to me. Like up to that point, I've never really had to sit on the bench in my life. So I'm, that least, was really. At least you weren't getting a bomb hit off you with a dude sticking his pinky out. <laughs> yeah, in college now. College has been different. So I get there, we get to the next game, championship game. That was COVID year, so we didn't have a natty. We just had a state championship, in which it was us in Northwest. They beat us, like, at least by 30 points, I think. And I still got, like, I think I got two drives total out of that game. 
That's why I lost. So I was like kind of discouraged and down and whatever for a while. We returned back to school after for January and I just like it was literally a joke. I seen our D coordinator and I was finna go to a quarterback meeting in defense at the weight room. And I was like, Coach, I'm finna come with y'all today. And he was like, Okay, come on. We didn't tell the head coach, the oh, offense really? coaches, we didn't tell them nothing until we get out there and they're like, Where's where's the Carlos? Where's the Carlos? And the coach was like, Oh, he's in here with us. He's with us. And then he was like, If you just trust me and you listen to what I say, I can have you in the SEC program in six months. And that literally happened. Wow. No, I wasn't good at all. <laughs> Looking back now, like I wasn't any good. I was just athletic. Which the receivers were pretty good, so I guess I was all right, but nah. It was pretty fun though. Dude, that's pretty cool. Switching over, yeah. I didn't even know that. It started out as a joke and then he's like, I got you. For that was yeah, that was pretty much the coolest part to me. Cause that's I was awesome. I had no I was just like I was really like mad and I was like, Well, I'll show him, like I'll show him and I was like okay. Well the best part about that too is like you go from <laughs> not starting and then just kind of, you know, feeling that just meh. Yeah. And then someone on the staff believes in you, says, Hey, come here, I got you. Yeah. Believe in it and then boom, you're at state, which is And without stars. without that, I probably wouldn't even got as many offers coming out, but the roommate, uh, the quarterback I was battling with who's at Jack State, he was like like he was a big football guy, like he said when we were younger, I was more baseball, so like he was like, dude, with your size, your speed, all, all your skills, like, like, you just need to go to camps. In the month of June, he's like, just go to camps and see what you can do. And I went to an LSU camp. They had, like, all the Louisiana team, McNeese, uh, mm -hmm. La Tech, all them ULM. I leave out of there with all the, like, every school offered me except for LSU. So that's where it really started, and it just took off from there. It was pretty awesome, honestly. Dude, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> talk about what's, what's the recruiting like? going to a community college out of high school. How did you choose to go to the Gulf Coast Gulf actually? Coast, yeah. Um it's cuz Chance Lovertich was there. Chance. So Chance was going into his final season there and they didn't have a quarterback committed like at the end of my junior year it was April. Like they didn't have a quarterback committed so I was like and the coach had showed me like the recent quarterbacks that he had. He coached Gardner Minshew. He's coached some more guys but like top guy that's and who's all led the league so uh, being a quarterback, I was like, well, I'll just go ride with him and take my chances with him. But Juco, like, they really won't give you, like, chant, like a long time to decide how D1 does it. They're like, well, we offered you. Are you going Are you gonna commit? Are you going to – because we need to know because we, we only got so many spots, blah, 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 yeah. blah. They, it's more pressure. Like, they'll pressure you more type. With D1, they press you too. But it's just a different, like, make your mind up with you. Yeah. Because they don't got forever. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. they don't got forever. What was that transition like going from playing quarterback to playing DB in a matter of six months and then coming to Mississippi State? What, what's the biggest difference between the community college level or JUCO? Mm -hmm. And i say it was really probably the sense of urgency that you got to have to – if you like, if you truly want to play, you got to hurry up and get everything right, know your job. Like in JUCO, they'll have a little bit more leniency – and like me, I had became the number one ranked corner, so it really wasn't any like, like I could just go out there and kind of half fiddle around or something like that, and they wouldn't, that come on, you gotta, you do better. But out here, <laughs> you know, McBath right? will tear me a whole new, I don't know, you know what, so. <laughs> He'll create something for you. <laughs> like, I don't know. And then off the field, like how we get the nutrition as soon as we finish. Mm -hmm. Like a Juco is just like, we do, like say we do a hard workout how we just did today well we leaving straight from the locker room either going to the cafeteria to get some probably eat about this much it was literally days i just get cookies and a power because i didn't want the food like i didn't Jeez. want the but now it's as soon as you get off you putting stuff right back in you you got infinite hydration in there that you can take home with you snacks and stuff like that so that's the biggest difference really well that's what i know i talked about all my boys like what are we gonna do in you know three years when we're done playing or Hopefully eight, nine, ten. Yeah. We have to go out and buy waters, <laughs> yeah. like, buy, buy shades, snacks. buy snacks, bro. <laughs> we ain't got chips and Cheetos and all that. You ain't got a muffin yeah. top to go chew on while you sit in the locker room scrolling through your phone. Nothing. I'm learning that right now. Being married, like she wants to go and like we're eating healthy meals for dinner because she wants it. So we're going to the grocery store like once every week, yeah. dropping a bag, and I'm like, yeah, they say that healthy food is like more way more expensive bro. than the stuff that's not healthy. Way, food. way more, more expensive. expensive. 
That's it's, just, what I've heard. What's also crazy. Speaking of food, is like we always come on food, but like <laughs> overseas, like in, in England and stuff, like a lot of the stuff that we eat here, like is not like is banned. Like a lot of banned substances that are here, like the uh, food, like co- certain food colorings are banned over there. Like I, I heard one of my one of my uh, in law family members lives over there. And as mentioned before, how like everybody over there is just is more fit, like yeah. not necessarily fit, but like way more healthy. Mm-hmm. Because it, bro, here it is getting. <laughs> we are pretty bad. Uh, I know. And Too much Chick Fil A on Tuesdays. <laughs> Mississippi, yeah. it's over with. We're obese, and we don't care. Some crawfish balls, man. <laughs> Can't miss what? up. Can't miss those. Alrighty, so you go from JUCO, you go to Mississippi State. I heard so Stetson told me one of obviously before the two national championship runs that honestly for him being at JUCO was one of his most favorite fun seasons he had Facts. playing. Yeah, he went to Same. Jones. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he went there. Same for you or Bro. fun? Really fun, like because you're just balling. And you could like you could you could compare it to like living in a dorm, but like we would have six people in like this room. And then we'd have a bathroom and we'd go across six more people. So, so 12 sharing a bathroom. 12 sharing two toilets and two mm. showers. That one like, and like oh. But my room, both years that I was there, my room was the, like, that's where everybody's coming. We're going to come. We're going to laugh. We're going to play the game. And we're just going to act up literally from the time we get out of practice until, like, everybody just like, bit. all right, we're going to sleep. <laughs> and we wake up doing the, the same thing. It, like. Then we did that for two years running. No, was class. Yeah, that's awesome. First year, I didn't, I didn't go to any classes because of COVID, oh, COVID and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we didn't, but second year, we didn't really. I mean, we had a little class. I think I went to two. That I went to, teachers were teachers were great. They really, one of my teachers actually helped me, push me to, so I could graduate that last English I needed to get out yeah. of there. So I appreciate her, but classes weren't that hard, no. That's awesome, dude. I'm actually in a class right now learning about the history of community colleges and JUCOs. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Like but I, they were created. I was blessed because we were one of the best ones, especially yeah. in this state. We were one of the best, like, facility-wise, living-wise, too, but it wasn't. Living-wise was still kind of down there, yeah. It's cool compared to here, of course, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're sure. small at this level, man. So I'm trying to think. When they had the, the TV show on Netflix, the yeah, East. Last Chance You, yeah. mm-hmm. where, where is that at? That's... That's the hour, hour from here. Really? Well, from yeah. School, but yeah. Wow, okay. Dude, that show was awesome. Did y'all ever watch that? Yeah. Bro, that sure. show was crazy. Actually, so, uh, Chauncey Rivers came here. He might have been, was he, who else came here off of that show? I want to say the light-skinned dude. The light-skinned was D-tackle the, with him. Yeah. I think he did. Was it a quarterback? That, maybe yeah. not. No, the quarterback went, one of the quarterbacks went to Nevada. The one that. that was there with DJ Law. The white quarterback that took his spot, yeah. I think he came up here on a Peter. Yeah, or he was a, one of them. He was a walk on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, did I thought, come up there. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah, that was pretty fun. In the first season, the girl that was kind of their uh, academic advisor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> what you nodding about over there? I'm just, I, I uh, like her. Like, <laughs> she was cool. When I was watching it, I was like, why are they talking to her like that? Yeah. <laughs> then I get here and it's like, I understand now. It's just yeah. apparently she was telling a story. I can't remember how I saw it, but I saw it on some video that one of her former players, who she'd kind of helped turn a new leaf and kind of start over, made, has made it in the league for like six years and sent her an envelope to her door. And it was like a huge thank you letter with a check on it. And it had a certain amount. It, she didn't talk about it, but it had a certain amount. And she was like, that's what I do it for. I was like, that's mm. pretty dope. That's, yeah, that is awesome. that's yeah. pretty dope. Imagine, bro, imagine <laughs> having the money to be able to be like, I remember this person. Yeah, they meant a lot to me. All right, All right here's a check. Yeah. God, it's so awesome. All right, so obviously one of the biggest differences for you from JUCO, for any of us, from high school to here or JUCO to here, is the game day experience. You yeah. get game day superstitions, like anything you do every single day, every single game day. <laughs> I do. On the wake up, I gotta listen to like I just gotta cut the speaker on and get Breath on the young boy. Yeah, you listen to something to, to get me in that mode, kind of for the set the tone for the day. Honestly, for the whole day. Yeah. The first song is like probably gonna be the same song right before the game. Like I want that energy the whole day. Really? Yeah. That's See, a lie. First song might be gospel. I was just I about like to say it. first, like first song. I wake up when I calm it down. Might be gospel. Then I get riled up, man. When we get when we get like. 
five minutes from the stadium, I turn my yeah. duster back on. I'm then late. for the dog walk out, like play some See, hard. Yeah. So I'm like just. I'm more similar to that. I'm gonna wake up and kind of do my devotion, like yeah. get in the word, get a get a good vibe going for the day. Then I don't listen to any music really until we get on the bus. Then I get on the bus and I'm more of like a contemporary like. Um, there's some country music. No, it's more of like Philip Phillips, like Jude and the Lion, like very. Uh, what, what, come, help me out, Carson. What, what's the word for the genre? To mellow you out. It's more like folk. Yeah, almost. so more of like, like just a lot more guitar, bro. Like a lot I, love guitar. I love music and stuff. So it's a lot of like acoustic <laughs> stuff, like just vibing, like it's yeah. really like, like yeah. a beach mood, like just chilling, like windows down, whatever. And then we get in the stadium. Once we get in the stadium. <laughs> you can live it on kill mode, bro. <laughs> bro, it's like you switch it. The eyes change, the ears change. Like it's it's over. Oh, the mindset's completely different. And then I write uh, A O one <laughs> on my wrist for audience of one, meaning like you're only playing for God. Mm-hmm. That's it. No, no matter yeah. what anybody else says. I tape both my wrist. That's about it. I think that's about all mine is. I have to wear the same gloves, like. So I have a pair of practice gloves and I have game gloves. Oh, what you were saying? You wear the practice and game all season. No, 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 no. Ooh, you just no, I have a pair. Man. No, <laughs> pair of game gloves, pair of practice gloves. I have to wear them until I can't wear them no more. And when I change my practice in them, at least for one day, and I wear them for another three or four games. I like that, dude. Oh, dude. <clears throat> Speaking of like gloves and cleats, my goodness, dude. With the amount like of humidity here yeah. and sweating. Oh, yeah. My cleats and smell bad. Bro. I smelled them in the wet room. Yes, <laughs> somebody walked by. They said, "Wally, your, your cleats stink." <laughs> no. I was watching that. Me. He, was, he was over there like this. <laughs> he said, "I was like, no, nope, no mind." <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want nobody to catch you. Dude, it was so bad. See the big size fourteens over there, staying in the whole room. It was, it was so. I need a new pair. Bad, bro. Bad. Yeah. What what cleats do you wear? Which, uh, which ones do you wear? I wear the mid cut kind of with the. A, like the maroon mm-hmm. stripes going across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you wear one? What do you wear? No, I like you low wear, top. You like the low, like low, low top. top. Yeah, I like light cleats. Unless it got, if it's like a sock top, I wear them. See, so do they like mm-hmm. this? It's so funny. Like whatever everybody's in, like they hate on. So like, if you're wearing Adidas, like I don't love Adidas. If you're wearing Nike, people are like I don't like Nike. Yeah. It's like it's always just how it is. But like especially like food, like food's the exact same way too. Like everybody in Georgia, not now because they have a new thing, but it used to be. Oh, our food here stinks compared to everybody else's. And then I get here and like other places are like, oh, our food stinks compared to everybody exactly. else. But dude, honestly, like I can say this after wearing Adidas and Nike, Adidas cleats. They're more comfortable. You but like they them. wear faster. They wear They out do wear faster, but way faster. With the I mean with the resources we have now, yeah, we can, I mean, yeah, we can not replace a problem. them. Yeah. Nike ones, man, they're they're comfortable with their big, clunky, like yeah. just especially for a combo. Like we had a, a weight thing where we had to wear like big cleats if we were above a certain weight. And I'm 260 pounds, so it was like I was almost. Yeah. Like, Darnell was in lineman cleats. They had him in lineman yeah, cleats. Yeah, I did see them. You got Bro, the baseball spikes about, on the bus. <laughs> talk, hey, talk about hot. That boy was hot. <laughs> like talk about him. Like, the first practice they put him in those. Talk about him being in a mood during flex and stretch. Bro, he was just a silent killer. <laughs> yeah. Who, uh, Dina, who do you who do you model your game after? Give us give us somebody that you. I don't think he gets the respect he deserves, but I'm gonna say Marshawn Lattimore. From Man, the Saints. you just like the Saints, bro. You don't think he gets the respect he deserves? He's one of the, he's one of the top DBs in the league. That's what I say, bro. But I, everybody just, else that I that I say that to, they're like, "No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not good. He's not good." Like, what does he do? What does he top, do? I'll give him top five. That's top what I five? give. Him. That's what yeah. I give. Him. It's cutting it. What? It's cutting it. <laughs> and I, he was hurt last year. Yeah, he was hurt last year. But I mean, they'll see this year. You know what? Uh, well, give me somebody you model your game after. Somebody I model my game after. I would like to be like like a Debo Samuel and like a CD Lamb, like a mixture of them. Hmm. I guess like Debo Samuel is just like moving around them, everywhere. Yeah. I love like I love that. Like if I could do that, I like I would love that. And then CD Lamb just I mean just a gritty line up and go get the ball. I like that about him. I have a few guys I know on the on the 49ers and one of them said he's the best just best fluid football player he's ever yeah. seen in his entire life. Debo? Bro. I mean, he just plays football. He's so good, dude. I believe that. He, he ain't to, skinny he, either. Dude. He ain't no little dude. Maybe. When he was at South Carolina, what's crazy is guys like that, though, that he was at South Carolina. You know, he, I mean, he was really good, right? Like, really mm-hmm. good. Like, he was one of the best players, but he wasn't like a national like, dude. Yeah, yeah. The name, yeah. And then you get to the league, and he's just like one of the best players in the league. Like, it's crazy. That is crazy how that works, though. Like, there's guys like, obviously, Christian McCaffrey, who was a dude, yeah. is a dude. 
But the yeah. guys that like are like Debo, it's like, where do they even come from? I don't from, understand dog? it. I, I guess I mean I guess college could be harder than like NFL in a way. Like here's, here's I a feel question. like I feel like college is easier for me than high school was. I mean in college like. You know, you got people around that just also they that, that can also play ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At my high school, I, I mean, I had people that could play ball, but like when no, I played against teams, like, like I was the focus of it. Like yeah. I was the focus. Yeah. Was, it makes I, it harder. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I, here's a question for you: Do you think where you go to college could potentially take years off your NFL career? Yeah. Where possibly? I think so. I was, yeah. watching, I was watching Taylor and and uh, Will talk about some busting with the boys, and they were they were talking about. You know, if you go to an Alabama or something like that, mm-hmm. like, you could put, like you see a lot of guys that go there and go to the league and they're only in the league for three, four years. That's a fact. Except Definitely for Derrick Henry because that dude's just different yeah. than uh, Julio yeah. Jones. But he can like, play as long as he wants to. You see some of the guys, like you see a lot of guys <laughs> that have long careers. Half the league is, is drafted guys and half the league is undrafted guys. And a lot of those undrafted guys are guys coming from like uh, Rice. A Rice. Yeah. Tulane. Toledo. Mm-hmm. Toledo. Yeah. And they're in the league for <laughs> 15 years. I mean, they, they obviously, they don't get beat up as bad as mm-hmm. people that play for Bama or Florida or Georgia. Yeah. Us, we get beat up on a lot. SEC, man. Oh, my gosh. SEC is physical yeah. every single week. Facts. You gotta love it, though. That's what we're built on. Like Coach Arnett said today. Oh, yeah. Pack your lunchbox and your hard hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to be tough. Oh, yeah. I love it. We're going to also uh, talk about your, your little man. Yeah. Dude, what's... Uh, What's been the best part about having him around? Man, Man, one of the coolest things before you get going. Yeah. One of the coolest things was when we went to, like, for me, guys that I've known that have kids, like, it was either guys from across the country, so the kid was back home, mm-hmm. or not really involved. But, like, dude, when we walked into um, the bin, mm-hmm. and you brought him in there, and I was like, dude, that's not, that's the coolest thing. Yeah. So, like, what's, what's that been like, being a dad? Bro, I mean, it's been awesome, actually. I mean, it ain't really, he'll whine a little bit, but he can tell you like he really don't, like he's not just like a hard kid to take care of. You give him, you give him a phone, you give him something, he'll sit it up and he'll entertain himself. Like, but probably learn, like listening to him or watching him every day to see how smart he is and stuff that he does and he knows what he's doing. Like he picked up my controller, like kid pick up a controller, he'll probably mess with the buttons. Like he literally looks down, sees the middle button, turns it on, here's the game. That's crazy. He looks up and he'll get the going. That's crazy. Like, why the TV not going? We just gave him like. When I realized that my like older cousin or parents would give me the controller and be like, "All right, play. You can play with us, but you're really not playing." Yep. That was like five or six when I figured out. He's already figured it out. Like, and it's just like PS4 and a PS5 controller. I'll give him PS4 and he's like, "I don't want that one. I want this one." <laughs> or hear him say, "Dada" or "Mama." Like that. The most accurate thing is. When on Family Guy, when it's like, mom, mom, mommy, <laughs> that's a hundred percent true, bro. I swear it is. I love it, dude. I swear. <laughs> that's uh, oh, that's DJ. awesome. <laughs> what was remind me of his name? What's his name again? Damari. Damari, dude. Damari Jaden. That's what DJ stands for. Love Damari Jaden. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Name him after me. I love it, man. That's awesome. How old is he? He's a year. Dude, that's so awesome. How has that changed, like your perspective and and like your reason for? want to be successful in football i just got to get it you got to go and get it because you got somebody looking up to you and then shoot if i don't get it then what's his life gonna be like i don't want i want him to have a carefree life be like you can have whatever he wants or he can like just say have all these stories of things that he's did that other people can't really say and he's had a father who's you know yeah was the example for him and type things like that my son gonna be a cowboy yeah, speaking of one, you got, I got one two. and one on the way. Mm-hmm. How's that, what's that been like for you? Like, how has that changed your perspective on everything? What's been your favorite part about being a dad? Oh, uh, biggest thing, like you said, have, just having someone look up to uh, look up to you. It just makes you want to go a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. And my daughter being so far away, it's kind of hard sometimes. But get through that. My son will be living with me, fired up. You know, gonna be a daddy's boy. Oh yeah, he's gonna be a cowboy for sure. Cowboy, <laughs> I'm a cowboy. I love it, dude. When's when's he? How? What? Couple three weeks. Three weeks? Man. Yeah. Couple weeks. I don't know. Any day Tomorrow. now. Honestly, any. Hey, calm down. <laughs> we'll let him, we'll let him cook a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Let's pull the water slide back out. Nick will make it happen. Yeah. Right there, so <laughs> Boy, Nick will do anything. For oh yeah. Him. Um, but no, nah, man. That's one thing I respect about both of you guys because 
I know Alexis talks about it sometimes, and I'm like, I couldn't do it right now. Yeah. yeah. And the example you guys said, I really respect. Yeah. Um, you guys, you guys are killing it. No doubt. We're gonna shift to uh, a little real talk blind draft. Here we go. Carson, explain it and take it away. Uh, yeah. So the blind draft. Uh, I'm gonna give you all five different things, and you gotta rank them without knowing what's coming next. Mm-hmm. Today's draft is country singers. Mm. I might not know five. You, you, know, you don't know. No, no, no. So how this is gonna work is he's I'm gonna name five. He's gonna name five. I'm gonna go one by without one. knowing what's next. We gotta rank them. First up, I got who some may call the king, George Strait. Oh man. One. I know that's a fact. You better say one. Oh, well, it's might a, not be I know, one. I know it's a safe answer for you. For I know it's a safe answer, but I, I'm just going on the fact that I think I know two names that he's going to say after. I know who I'll you put want. him at two. I'll put him at two. I know who I'll you want. I'll put him at. Um, <laughs> Come on. I'm going to go with a little hot take. I'm going to go three. <clears throat> That's where I was going to put yeah. him. <laughs> I'm going three. Okay. <laughs> Next, we got Kenny Chesney. Three. Ooh, I saw him live. Three. I did too. Him and Zach Brown. Sh- saying, no shoes. No For shoes. Sure. Yeah. No Pro- problem. Kenny's probably going to have to get a five for me. Kenny. You know personally. Poor Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go four. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not far off. Three with him. That's a safe four. Next, I have Blake Shelton. Oh, five. this is getting worse for me. I'll give him four. Five. Give five. me the Knicks two, man. Although he's amazing on the voice, when he, his that show is awesome. But yeah. his singing, I ain't with Blake I'm not a big whiner for listening to yeah. songs. And he he whines to me yeah. a lot. I get just, that. Yeah, that's why I know the hot take. I'm not a huge fan of listening to certain female artists because they just this is not a generalization. Just some of them that I've listened to before scream and whine, and I feel like Blake Shelton's in that whining category. <laughs> yeah, so I hate Blake. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Next up, y'all might be upset about this because you have your lower spots taken but Florida Georgia line oh okay but if it's if it's depends this could go two ways it could go, go, either go Florida Georgia line or it could go what's his face who's alone now because they're not a band Cam anymore. Brown no he's not it I don't um, know his name more he said not a band they're not they're not a, a duo anymore I didn't even know that but Cam Brown wasn't in it yeah Florida Georgia line is no longer a thing oh uh, but the, uh, Tyler Childress not Tyler Childress no. is it? Tyler something but He's he's had a couple hits lately that have been really good. I'm fine with a I'm fine with a two for that. Okay, yeah, yeah right. you can go either way with that. Florida Georgia to, Line or the Soda. I said I'm gonna go with four with Florida Georgia Line. I'm gonna have to give him a two. Okay, that's all I got left. <laughs> Last but not least, Toby Keith. Oh, oh I love God. it. One. He thought she was gonna say Luke Combs. Where is Morgan Wallen and Luke Combs? But he'll be my number one. I like him. That's my one. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> I was gonna go more modern, but I didn't. I didn't I like know what you guys back. listened to, so I went with some some, some, bigger, some bigger names. No, yeah, Toby I was Keith, gonna go dude. like Zach Bryan, no Tyler shot. Childers. I think, like, I think I think Toby Keith has stomach cancer. He does. Yeah, he's had it for a while now. Sad man. Prayers up to him, man. Prayers up, Toby. He's a big supporter of the uh, American troops. He's a good dude. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go through your five again. Oh, uh, George Strait. Who was my two? I don't even remember anymore. I think it was Toby Keith. Yeah. And then I had Kenny Chesney. Yep. And my four was uh, Florida Georgia Line. Florida Georgia Line. Then I had Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. Solid. Need, need, don't even know. I'll I'm just solid go ahead. with it. I'll go ahead and go. <laughs> Toby Keith, Florida Georgia Line, George Strait, Kenny Chesney, Blake Shelton. Florida Georgia Line over. I didn't know it was coming. George Strait. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, was hoping for Trace Atkins. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah. I'm a huge Trace Atkins. Yeah. Guy. There's just so many I could have picked. Yeah. There's it's, just. I was trying to go with a variety of. What people would have opinions on. Nah, yeah. I love it. That's awesome. That's pretty good. All right, do you, Nick? My list. No, you're good. You don't have to do it if you don't. Can you remember the names? I know I had Blake Sheldon fourth. <laughs> I had Floor Georgia Line two, and. Uh, you had George Strait five, I think. No, you had George Strait two. Three. Two. You had George Strait two. I gave him two because he gave him three. Yeah. Floor Georgia Line was who? Three? Yeah. Shelton was four. I think Kenny was number uh, five. And so Toby one was, was first. Yep, Toby yeah, Keith nice. won. Yep. I love it. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for being on, man. I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Oh, yeah. Sir. No doubt. I'll see y'all, see y'all boys bright and early. No, no doubt. Yeah. Real talk. That's right. This is real talk. Real this talk, is real baby. talk. <laughs>